So, hey, I'm Chloe. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at YOLO underscore Karama. And you can follow my YouTube channel, which is Two Zealous Nerds, and that's spelled the number two dot zealous dot nerd. And this is Tin Pod Radio. Please don't fear me because I know what I want. Please deliver me that song out of your soul. It makes you freeze time, staring in at yourself. It's time to step outside onto the path you once made. present as the pledge was hovering for a few moments above the waters off the coast of central florida thinking about his past as his black cape blew in the wind he knew the signs that being lost in your own past signal for your future but he has acted as he always has the wind really began to kick up and his cape wrapped itself around him like a comfortable shield it was in this moment that he sensed something truly worrying standing there in mid-air floating above the water a sight looking sort of like what would happen if Clive Barker designed the costumes for a Disney movie about wizards. That sight was one of the most powerful living beings in all of creation. His clothing was old but modern, and I mean modern in the sense that leather was formed to look like metal. The leather was brown, a dark brown outfit that was from head to toe. His boots resembled socks until you got a closer look at them. They were made from the thinnest of leathers. His bodysuit was one large piece. The only thing separating it from the rest of the outfit was the sign of Solomon burned into the brown leather at the centre of his chest. The sign was also set into the back of his cape. Slowly, he descended into the water. As the water contacted with his body, he tried to connect with the world of the sea, but something was interfering with the connection he had reached before. Down into the depths of the ocean he went. As he sunk, his lungs changed to fit his need. His blood warped and his skin scaled from the top of his bald head down, like dropping rolled up window blinds. Finally touching the bottom of the sea floor with the tips of his toes, the pledge was being bombarded with signals from the sea world, trying to tell him what he would be facing. He wasn't able to decode these signals in time, though, because he wasn't used to being in this world, so to him, it just seemed like the ocean was singing to him. He reached down and touched the sand at his feet, as if to say hello. In reply, the sand was stirring, trying to tell him to run. The other powerful being walking through the water, the one who had caused the impact in the exceedingly deadly series of waves crashing into the Florida coast, was a being that the Pledge knew instantly when he came face to face with him, by the feeling he felt being in his presence. The Pledge held out his gloved hand in the gesture for the individual to stop. He had already stopped, so the gesture was more for dramatic effect. Dramatics are wasted on those who were there at the beginning, as in, the beginning of the universe. Through his thoughts, the Pledge spoke. This is not the end time for humanity. Why have you returned in full glory? The creature stood in the water like an emotionless, well-dressed, fresh corpse, without even blinking, just staring straight ahead. The pledge pulled his cape behind his back, locking his hands together in an ancient gesture of power. I have been to the gates of hell. I have stood in the presence of the great black bull. Your gaze will not move me. I have sworn the Pledge of Solomon to be the keeper of humanity's knowledge, and I need to know, why are you here? The individual is death. This must be known now, because what happens next is what happens to those who try to obstruct death. The Pledge took only half a step before death lifted his hand and waved it out in front of his body, as if swatting a fly. At that instant, the Pledge's body burst, no, exploded into a million goldfish that swam off in all different directions before dying in the inhospitable salt water. Death kept walking forward as if this encounter had never happened and the waves kept pounding Florida.
through the training books as a sleep-deprived, often drunk writer's brain dump, expelling the wasteland of words and thoughts from his brain so he can reboot for the rest of the week. Under the training book is a journal-style show resembling a diary Lynn blog. It's a mix of rants on politics, musings about faith, pop culture references, and every stream of consciousness thought that might cross the mind, all on Tin Pod Radio. We hope you've enjoyed this Tin Pod Radio Fiction Audio Production narrated by Stacy Taylor. You can find Stacy on Twitter at StaceBobT and her podcast is popcultureparlor.podbean.com. This story is written by Brian C. Williams, edited by Christina Caceres, copyrighted 2017, System Productions.